Kylian Mbappe was caught brutally snubbing a celebrity magician, and that has incited the anger of fans on Twitter. Magician Julius Dean was present at a celebrity gala held recently, and guess who else was there? the entire PSG squad. Dean attempted to mesmerise Mbappe with his incredible talents, but the Frenchman's reaction and attitude has come in for stinging criticism. Who is your favourite superhero? Dean asked. Me, Mbappe responded. Hardly the most humble of responses, and one that prompted a backlash online. Mbappe will die of arrogance. Dean then specified, no, but from the movies. To which Mbappe replied, Spider-Man. Then, just as Dean was preparing to dazzle Mbappe with a trick, the striker walked off unceremoniously to greet fellow guests. Hakimi, who was within earshot, quickly explained that they'd come back. A statement that was echoed by Mbappe, I'm coming back. But according to Dean, he never did. This entire sequence has sparked controversy on social media. The difference between Messi and Mbappe is unfathomable. Another user then compared him to one of his idols, but not in a good way. I hate Mbappe's attitude. I never thought I'd say this, but he's more arrogant than Ronaldo. Speaking of Messi, his interaction with Dean was of stark contrast. On various occasions, La Polga was spotted alongside his wife Antonella Racuzzo, his Italian teammate Marco Verratti, and his partner Jessica Aidi. And one clip in particular was well received by fans. As Messi and Verratti prepared to be dazzled by one of Dean's magic tricks, the Argentine was heard mumbling in English. And that was met with both surprise and joy in equal measure. Following the emergence of their respective clips, Mbappe has been adjudged to be arrogant, while Messi has been adjudged to be, well, just as down to earth as you previously imagined. What do you guys think of their behaviour? Okay, moving on now. Now, we're sure by now that you've spotted this rather bizarre phenomena of players cutting holes in their socks. AS Roma manager Jose Mourinho posted a rather perplexing image on social media on Monday of players with rips in their socks. He accompanied the montage with a rather tongue-in-cheek caption, beautiful socks for the beautiful game, approved by the football authorities. So, who were the players in question? Jude Bellingham, Bakayo Saka, and Gabriel Martinelli. It seems that this trend caught wind in the early 2010s, for example, Kyle Walker and Gareth Bale being notable proponents of this habit. So I know what you're all thinking, why do they do it? Well, it is an effort to avoid injury, it seems. You see, before each game, players receive new socks. And inevitably, said socks are incredibly tight, and this is not optimal in particular for the muscles, especially for players who are injury prone. So it's believed that cutting these holes into the socks helps to relieve some of the pressure on the muscles, most notably the calf area, helping to try to prevent cramp and other niggles. But according to specialists, it might not be that simple. Back in 2012, doctors interrogated by Spanish publication AS insisted that cutting holes is above all else a psychological aid to help prevent injuries, a sort of placebo effect. So what about you guys? Do you do the whole holes in the socks thing? And speaking of players with contentious injury concerns, Karim Benzema's personal trainer has hit out at the France national team backroom staff for their management of the star ahead of the 2022 World Cup. Javier Atalaya was a guest on Radio Marca on Tuesday and it seemed like he had a lot to get off his chest. You might remember how Karim Benzema was ruled out of the competition after injuring his left thigh in training just two days before France's opener against Australia. The striker subsequently left camp just hours later in the middle of of the night without any possibility of addressing his teammates. And according to Atalaya, the backroom staff are to blame for his premature departure. They are said to have rushed the forward back too soon, despite him still suffering from a muscle strain that was enough to keep him out of games for Real Madrid. In the French camp, they made an error with Karim. Even the president admitted it. We can't force a player who has just come back from injury and an eight hour flight to train in a gym at 100%. Atalaya no doubt referenced Noel Legraet's comments to add weight to his claims. This is what the former president of the French FA had to say on the issue at the time. He was injured, he unfortunately left, and I'm sorry for that. I admire what Benzema has done throughout his career, and he's just had his best season yet. Unfortunately, in the first or second session, he picked up a niggle. 
I have so much admiration for him. The player's entourage still maintain that he was ruled out too soon. So what are your thoughts on how that whole situation unfolded? Vincent Abubakar found himself in a tough situation earlier this year. With Al Nasser's acquisition of Cristiano Ronaldo, the Saudi Pro League side had no choice but to part ways with a foreign player. During an interview with French television channel Canal Plus, Abubakar revealed that as soon as Cristiano Ronaldo arrived, he made his wishes to be released clear. However, CR7 wanted Abubakar to stay, at least until the end of the season. After all, the Cameroon international knows the league well and has demonstrated that he can score goals for the club. It was first believed that CR7's arrival had forced Abubakar out of the club Al Nasser against his will. But now it's clear that the striker was the one who wanted to leave. Despite CR7 envisioning them playing together, Abubakar has since joined Besiktas. Returning to a club that he played for during the 2020 to 2021 season, where he also scored 15 goals in 25 games. Ronaldinho's son signing in Barca. It's official, Ronaldinho's son is joining Barca Barcelona after impressing the coaching staff. João Mendes has been on trial with the Catalans since January, and it would appear the Brazilian striker has done enough to earn himself a contract. Now Barca fans can look forward to following the development of Mendes, and as an added bonus, they'll see the return of Ronaldinho, who will be around the club more often now that his son is there. When speaking to Spanish news outlet Marca, Ronaldinho insisted that Barcelona was part of life and that he would be more present there. I'm never out of the club. Barcelona is part of life. Wherever I go, I take Barcelona with me. With the arrival of my son at Barca, I'll be more present than ever. But it's far too early to know if Mendes has the same Ballon d'Or winning level talent that his father had. But he is joining one of the best player development clubs in the world. La Masaya has a big heritage of producing stars, many of whom have carved out incredibly successful careers at the Camp Nou. I mean, even their current manager and midfield legend, Xavi, once suited up for La Masaya. Which is why Mendes will be making the move to Spain after spending the first few years of his career developing his skills at Brazilian club Cruzeiro. Mendes will be giving himself the best possible chance of long-term success while receiving expert tuition and having access to world-class facilities. He will just need to step out of his father's looming shadow first, and that's no easy task, especially at a club where he will be looked at as the son of a legend. So yeah, no pressure. The reaction of Mourinho about what is happening at Manchester City. Jose Mourinho has never been shy about airing his opinions, regardless of who it offends. The legendary manager wears his heart on his sleeve and is no fool when it comes to working the media to spin a narrative. During his most recent roles managing in the Premier League, where he had spells at both Manchester United and Tottenham Hotspur, Mourinho took aim at the spending power of Manchester City on multiple occasions, questioning the legality of their ever-growing squad and the eye-watering sums of money it took to assemble them. So, when the news broke that Manchester City had been charged with over a hundred breaches of breaking financial fair play rules, Mourinho was probably grinning from ear to ear. After all, this is the same manager that called their non-stop spending a disgrace. If you are guilty, the decision is also a disgrace. If you're guilty, you should be banned from the competition. So of course, Jose would have something to say now that these allegations are public news, right? Well, sort of. Rather than speaking out in public or using this news cycle to share his thoughts with the world, Mourinho decided to be more tactful in his criticism, taking to Instagram to post pictures of players playing with holes in their socks with the caption, beautiful socks for the beautiful game, approved by the football authorities. Could this be a thinly veiled shot at Man City? City's never-ending riches and the way that they throw money around in a bid for European dominance? Well, the majority of football fans seem to think so. However, this would be a new approach from Mourinho, who is usually the first one to speak his mind rather than posting cryptic messages on social media. Still, something tells me this is not the last that we will hear from him on this subject. Anyway, that's all the news for today, guys. We'll be back again tomorrow for more. In the meantime, take care and as always, football forever. <laughs>